Welcome to Around Town featuring what's happening here in the Greater Concord area. I'm your host, Dick Patton, and welcome to spring, summer, whatever you may like it. Today it seems like summer, but today we're still in spring. But my special guests are Chuck and Diane Seller from Apple Hill Farm up there in uh, East Concord on Mountain Road. And uh, so, Curious before I get into the good stuff, I gotta ask you a question because it made the news and you're on the front page of the paper because of it. Jamaican workers. I didn't know you hired Jamaican workers too. I know Carter Hill does. Okay. What's gonna happen? I didn't I didn't think there was gonna be a problem. Is there gonna be a problem? Um, we don't think there's gonna be a a, a big problem. The, the problem that we actually see uh, coming on the horizon is that uh, as we've tightened up our borders yeah. Uh, the western oh, part yeah. of the United States is the big agricultural engine. Yeah. And they are turning to this program, the program that we've used for years oh, to get perfectly legal. And we're just hoping that our government is nimble enough to see, you know, this coming in the in the, in the horizon because it is a it is a big paperwork yeah. Uh, deal. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and you know these men have to get clearance from the Department of Labor, from Homeland Security. They have to get visas. You know, so there's a lot of paperwork that has to happen and that's actually the biggest threat that we see is that all of a sudden you know when a, mm. several large growers in the west coast ask for two or three thousand workers uh, it'll overwhelm the system so that, that's our biggest threat that we see right now when do they normally come in though um, you know it all started that it was typically just the apple harvest yeah but as more and more of the farms, and we're sort of a typical deal now, sure. uh, we grow you know, strawberries, blueberries, vegetables, oh peaches, God. apples, all those really? things. And uh, you know, we need a good, yeah. reliable labor source to, to grow yeah. all those things. Yeah. So uh, for us, our men are due in, uh, our paperwork is asking for men on July 1st. Really? Uh, but some of the farms in the southern part of the state that grow a lot of stuff in the greenhouses yeah. have already uh, requested men and they've got men here already. Wow. And those men will be here from, you know, April till 1st of November, perhaps. Really? Yeah. Huh. Well, wouldn't you need them if you're doing strawberry, though? In um, we can typically get everything planted. Because that's, you know, anybody who's got a garden knows that's the easy part, putting oh, the seeds yeah, in the ground. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the real work starts taking care of it, weeding and, and harvest. So we, we, the way we plan it is that with the, the local help that we got, we can get everything in the ground, get the strawberry crop harvested, because most of it's pick your own. Mm -hmm. And then July 1st is when we really start needing men to work in the field. Oh, right. So that's our plan. Huh, that's and, your plan, huh? Yeah, and, and we're fortunate because we still have a good local crew that come on yeah um, you know we had up to 20 last year oh of, of local folks wow. um, the, the, this secret part with the Jamaicans is that they're experienced and when it comes to picking they know what they're doing oh, and really? how to do it yeah. and not everybody can pick no and, and do it the proper way that's you know the experience is really what counts hmm. Interesting. but you know as I, I think we said in the paper you know we've got uh, two of these men have been with us for more than 20 years yeah We've seen their kids grow up. We've seen them build houses in Jamaica and improve their lot of life. And you know, like any long-term employee, you know, you do feel loyalty to them. Uh, of course. And uh, it's it's kind of a neat relationship. Is Jamaica as bad as Haiti, though? I mean, is it a poor country or is it a? Um, I don't know. I've never been to Haiti. Yeah. Um, but there are parts of Jamaica that certainly are uh, less developed really? than here, for for sure. Hmm. Um, and these men are typically farmers in Jamaica. Yeah. So they live in the farm country of Jamaica, not the north coast where you, you know all the tourist resorts. Oh yeah, are. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little bit of a different world, hmm. with no doubt about it. And that, that's actually been one of the interesting things is actually getting exposed to somebody that lives in a different place. You know, yeah. public education ends in the sixth grade. Well, now you've um, added all these vegetables and fruits up there. When are you going to add the cows? No. <laughs> no animals. <laughs> no petting zoo? No petting zoo, no oh animals. Gosh, you got to have a cow or two up here. we got so many neighbors and great yeah, neighbors that have got animals. Um, yeah, but nothing like the old blood farm up there. Though, I right? know, they were up the road, yeah. And yeah. What's, uh, I wonder what's going to happen to that property, because that gentleman died suddenly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's going to happen to that big property? Um, you can it's, purchase it if you want. It's for yeah, sale. It's for sale. Yeah, right. It'll actually be, from our point of view, it'll be kind of interesting to see 
because of course that land has a conservation easement on it. I know, it. they can't ask. So it'll be interesting to see what the market is for that. It's obviously going to have to be somebody that recognizes that. I mean, that's it's on the deed. Mm. Um, it's going to be somebody who wants a very, very large front lawn. <laughs> because if I remember right, he fought that quite a bit. And he, he uh, there's an easement on there, and he got those two big mansions out there built, but that was it. Actually, I think that's just one, maybe. Yeah, yeah the, other, the other big house is actually on a separate piece of property. Oh, it is? Yeah, yeah. that's a separate piece. Oh, yeah. I thought that was, that was a both hit. It may uh, have been at one time, but it's, they're, they're separate parcels now. And I noticed last year or so, he had cows out there, smaller cows, yeah. on that side yeah. of the barn was. Yeah, yeah. He, always, he always raised a few beef cattle yeah. for himself and his family. Yeah, and there were some horses there at one time. But and yeah. somebody's still mowing the hay and taking oh, the hay are. off, which yeah. is good. They leased that part out, yeah. so it's still being utilized as a farm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If whoever buys it, if they want to, and I hope they do, want mm -hmm. to lease it to one of the other local farmers, they'll have no trouble leasing that land. But God, the old days when you'd see all the cows out there <laughs> and then across the road. Well, yeah. that was a champion farm. They had oh. a long bloodline. Yeah, and then, of course, yeah, the old bull barns. We yeah. all remember that. I, oh, I remember that. <laughs> yes, and then it became a, well, was it the old Concord uh, City College here or something? Yeah, yeah for yeah. a little while. And then the church took it over, and now they tore it down, I guess. And they, it was, uh, they, yeah, they tore down what was the bull barns. Yeah. They yeah. still have a portion. That yeah, they have but they, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's still yeah. a portion of it, and, of course, there's still the sanctuary and all that for the church. Oh, there is one, yeah. Yeah. Well, that brings me back to you now. Like, winter being crazy as it was, how did the apple trees survive this year? What a project. We're going on the assumption that we've got a good crop out there. That's the optimist that we always are. Um, but certainly, anytime there's a record weather event, it makes farmers nervous. I don't care if it's a record cold or record warm. Well, I know. You know, because um, if you think of the maple syrup there, I mean, people were, I found, heard people were tapping trees back in December. I heard January. I didn't hear December, yeah. but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I was told from uh, Howard Pearl that, yeah. they, that they were some some <laughs> people were tapping trees back in no, not Howard. Yes, Howard, back in December. I said December. You know, it just didn't make sense. But January either. But, January got warm though. But February was warm, seventy-one degrees in February. It's like that's crazy. Yeah. But if you look at old records, you'll see where we had swings like that in the past really? years, and you'll see where some yeah. of the farmers tapped out trees. And really? Yeah, you were just yeah. looking at the town of Andover, weren't yes. you? Some historical records. Yeah. And there's, I can't remember what year you told me. It was in the me. 1800s. They made syrup in January, and they noted That's it in the sad. town records. Isn't that some? Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the weather, it's always been the zinger for the agriculture. Know. And it was so dry last year. Yep. God. It's nice to see the ponds filled again. But they claim it was still in a drought, though. You know, um, I said to Diane, I've got a call. Yesterday was the meeting of the state drought management team, mm. and I haven't heard the report yet. Whether they say we're officially out of the drought or not, I don't know. I can't believe we, I, I, we're in a drought with so much rain and well, snow. Well, you know, out. but if you think about it, if you drive out across your lawn right now, you don't sink in too far. No, I know. You know, that, and yeah. usually it's mud season, and yeah, you, you know, yeah. you bury your car. So. Oh, well, I know. I, yeah, true. It's right. And it's it may be, soak in a lot. It may be based more on groundwater levels now than what we're actually seeing on the landscape. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. That's why I said it'll be interesting to see what they determined. Uh, but I think they only meet monthly, so, yeah. you know, last time they met would have been, you know, I think March. Last summer was horrible. It was a difficult summer. It sure was. I got sick of watering my lawn night. I didn't care if it turned to dust or what. The wife didn't <laughs> like it, but... We got tired of watering things, too. We, yeah. We pumped a lot of water. I bet you did. Moved a lot of pipes. <laughs> shuffled things did. around. And we stopped growing a few things. We let them go. Yeah. Because we just couldn't keep the water on them. How many apple trees you got out there now? Oh gosh, total number of trees must be close to between three and four thousand. Wow, holy mac! Yeah, too many. <laughs> I know, but I but I'm assuming that you're growing more than the traditional ones, like the Macintosh and Cortlands and that. That's certainly yeah. What we focused on and all that is we've made this sort of transition from growing this and fruit to Boston to growing for customers. Um, it's been interesting and yeah you got to offer them different things and uh, it's impressive to go in any one of the supermarkets in Concord mm. they've got a great produce section and uh, we got to compete against that so we can compete against them by having different apples 
I know, but I still, I, I guess I'm a, just a traditionalist. To me, an apple is a Macintosh, and that's it. <laughs> Maybe a Cortland. Yeah, red but you got to cook with it. Red Delicious, I never liked. Yeah, I never gave much on Red Delicious. And these green apples, like Granny Smith, is like, that to me is not local. You know, I'm, that's where we were brought up. Macintosh was the big deal, and so was it. Of course, the grandmothers, they always used Northern Spy or Baldwin or Gravestein. But Macintosh and Cortland, you could eat Cortland apples, were good. I, th I think this winter was a good good thing to think about buying local and what you can find local because you mm. go in the stores, you can't find any Macintosh this year. No. Because there was such a short crop, they mm. sold out early and yeah. there were none in storage. No. And I've kind of had fun looking at the apples, seeing where they're coming from and what the new ones are that are coming in and trying some of them because mm. quite frankly, some of them we can't plant because they're these new club varieties. So. It's, it's been interesting, but there's no Macintosh out there that I could find. What do you mean club variety? Well, it means you buy into the growers union, so to speak, and only those growers can grow these apples, and we call them a club variety, because oh. you have to be part of the club to, oh, to raise them. Um, but they're hoping to maintain a quality that way, and to keep the, the strain of the apples true to the apple themselves. So. Mm. We'll see how they go. I, I don't know. I had to laugh when I came home the other day because they thought they were going to get a higher price, and they were right in there with everything else. There was no no premium price that I could see. Well, I bought some, they said Macintosh just recently, at Hannaford's, I think it was, and they didn't taste any more like a Macintosh that I would have hmm. tasted huh. thought it was a Macintosh. It just didn't have the right taste to it. Huh. I, mean, I don't know if it was something that was mixed in or got in the wrong bin or what. I know, you have to be careful sometimes because you're right, they get shuffled around. Yeah, <laughs> and it just didn't taste, it, was, it was, just didn't taste like a Mac. Huh. huh. You know, and I just picture a Mac, you know, right off the bat. And I, I don't know, of course, these other things like McCowan and Empire and all them and Fuji and... Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, there's new ones all the time. Yeah. And it is one of the things we, we try to balance, you know, we try to be cutting edge and be on the new things, but, you know, we've also taken a step backwards and grown a bunch of the old right, Northern Spies, bald ones. Yeah, I mean... You know, all those things we grow. Yeah, I mean, do people really want these new things? I mean, Granny Smith, I mean, are you growing them too? Yeah. I don't. Granny Smiths, we're not, and one of the reasons that we're not is they have a really long growing season. Really? So they would be like mature, like November... 10th or 15th really? well you know November 10th or 15th around here it can be oh, yeah. very very cold yes um, so Granny Smith is one of the ones that we haven't even tried yeah right. um, but yeah there's lots of new ones that are all over the, the spectrum it used to be and, golden, golden delicious yeah we grow some of those and then there's like a banana apple We've got one tree of those. Really? <laughs> winter banana. What do they call that? Winter banana. Really? Is the one it is. It's like a golden, but it's really, really smooth, waxy skin. I don't yeah. think it tastes like a banana, to tell you no, the truth. I was going to say, yeah. It's pretty sweet, though. Yeah, somebody had huh. a better idea, you know. That's actually an old, old variety, winter banana. Really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, if we look at our customers, you know, if we got to keep attracting new customers, Young people want to try new things. Always have been, but, you know. But you are bringing back the Northern Spy and the Baldwins then. Yep. Well, that's yep. good. And yet, Gravenstein hasn't come back yet. Yep, we've got Gravenstein trees good. in the ground. We, right. we have a few, you know. So, yeah, we try to meet everybody's expectation. Wow. I mean, my grandmother, she would not cook with anything oh, yeah. except Gravenstein. For, for baking her pies for you, it had to be a Gravenstein <laughs> apple. She wouldn't <laughs> use it. Yeah. I tell people all the time, the most dangerous question that I ever get in the farm stand is a nice little old lady, and she'll say, so what have you got for cooking? Mm. And it's almost like no matter what you tell her, <laughs> yeah. she's going to go to that one variety that she oh, wants. Yes. It's like, why did you ask me the question? You knew you wanted Gravensteins, or you oh, knew you yeah. wanted Northern Spies. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a dangerous question. Yeah. <laughs> because that's, I mean, that's what we were brought up on was that. I sure. Mean, Max and Max and stuff. I mean, but, no, it just makes you wonder. I mean, uh, Fuji does not sound like a... A uh, New Hampshire apple to me. I don't know where it come from, but uh, come on. Yeah, Fuji Island. Thank you, Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, there's an interesting story. We've got another variety that? that came out, and it's called Mutsu. It's a Japanese variety. Mutsu. 
in I have no idea what that means in Japanese. But in the United States, a whole bunch of growers got together and said, no, that just isn't going to cut it. And so we renamed it Crispin. Well, that we can all relate to. Yeah. And it is. It's a beautiful, nice, large, greenish, but if you let it mature, it'll be yellow hmm. and uh, crispy, Crispin and all that. But yeah, so the name does have a lot to do with it. Yeah. And if you look at all the new varieties, I mean, they hire marketing firms now to come up with the name that's going to attract somebody to it. So the jazz, envy, yeah. Yeah. you know, the pinata. Pinata, you yes. You know, I mean, they, they, it's all marketing. <laughs> I get it. I mean, the car companies have been doing it for years, right? Oh, yeah. Who would yeah. want to own a Stingray? Come yeah, on, really, you know? Yeah, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> Everybody now. <laughs> but the uh, strawberry season the last year, if I remember right, wasn't that late? I didn't think it was early last year. It wasn't early. No, and, it was late. You know, in our, our sort of thinking about it, if we can pick 21 days, yeah. that's a good strawberry season. Now, the season may last 30, you know, and there's a bunch, maybe it's rainy in a bunch of days in there. But it, historically, if we can pick 21 days, and it's going to be somewhere mid-June to mid-July, that 21-day window. Mm. And uh, last year, we, we ended up with a pretty decent crop of strawberries. We were yeah, happy. It, it was a little bit smaller than normal because of the mm. drought, even though yeah. we added water to it. Um, we found they didn't size up quite like they normally do, yeah. um, and I think a little bit of it was just a strain on the plants. Sure. We have planted new plants for this spring, though, mm. um, and we've got a new bed coming in with two new flavors that we're trying that are out of Canada, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. They're supposed to be very cold hardy and have good flavor, and um, so well, we'll see. Blueberries, you got blueberries too. Mm -hmm. Blackberries? No. No blackberries. <laughs> We tried them. Yep, we, we've and tried they, them, and we could never crop them. Really? We, I shouldn't say that. We have 25 plants, maybe, and they bloom, and they get berries, and just about the time they start to get sweet, we get a frost on them, and then they really? don't survive. Yeah, they're really, the ones we've got are really late, so we gotta, we got to look at that. And plus, some of them, you know, they're really nasty. They've got nasty oh, thorns yes, on them. Oh, yes, I know they do. Um, and the birds carry them all over the farm. Really? <laughs> so you end up with blackberry, you know, all over the place with really? nasty thorns. Yeah. So they've got some new ones that, that we we got we we're talking this spring. We got to take a look mm -hmm. at these new blackberries. They're supposed to be on thornless plants. Yeah. And uh, of course, one of the issues we have here is this is Concord, New Hampshire. Yeah. And uh, their winter hardiness may not be what it could be. Hmm. You know, I mean, we can get ten below zero here. Oh yes, very easily. Uh, and so there's systems where you can lay the plants down mm -hmm. and cover them with cloth and all that to help protect them and. But with the winds, I can just see how yeah, that would we, work. We, we kind of said, hmm. <laughs> so, so we'll see. But blackberries, yeah, currants, hmm. um, raspberries. Chuck's going to plant some grapes. Hmm. Planting some, some nice. seedless grapes this, this spring. Really? There's some varieties. They're not going to be the Thompson that you're used to finding or like that in the store. Oh. But they're new varieties. Uh, most of them are coming out of New York State. But they will be seedless table grapes that are hardy for our hmm. area. University of New Hampshire has been working with them and has come up with a list of the plants that they're recommending. Where we've got some grapes coming. Hmm. Who knew? Yeah, I know. Really <laughs> interesting. You know, and of course the university is doing a lot of work on this kiwi berry. And it's we a, tried them last year. They brought them around for samples, and they look like a kiwi, but they're smaller. They're about half the side. Yep. <laughs> What's the kiwi? No, I mean, oh, those are the green it's things. A fuzzy green fruit, typically oh, you yeah, think of okay. it from from Australia, uh, or New oh, Zealand, okay, yeah, Hawaii. Right. And uh, but yeah, there's a there's a strain that will grow in New England. They're smaller, and that's why they're calling them kiwi berries. Hmm. Really sweet. Um, all the winemakers in the state are just dying for for people to grow them. Oh, I bet they are. They they supposedly make a really wonderful fruit wine. Hmm. Um, so if that's your thing, you know. Now you must be right now. Basically, you two are. The uh, main, oh, let's see, Concord Farmers Market. What is your role? Are you know, like the organizers <laughs> or the uh, head ones? Actually, or? we just stepped down. We thought it was did time you? for some fresh blood and some younger people to get involved. You um, mean you found some? We did. Yep. My gosh. We did, we did. We have a new treasurer and a new new secretary this year. and mm. So we, we just passed things on. We're still there, you know, to help out and, you know, inform them when they, you know, yeah. know I our mean, turn. And we'll but still be vendors. Of course, but yeah, as far as the operation of the market, it was it was time for some new people, new ideas, and 
Now, food. basically, that's food. Do you have, I, I've noticed now, I'll tell you what I was what, what I'm bringing this up is the Grange is wondering, should we be in the farmer's markets around the state? Because we're agriculture. We were known for many years as the friend of the farmer. That's why we were organized. Definitely. But is it, should, the, should the Grange be in there with like an informational booth, or is it just a waste of time for us to be in there? You know, it, it's hard to say. You never know. We because. have a lot of people that come and, and will talk. Yeah. And if you can get a presence, we always have a nonprofit area that we, mm. you know, give out for free, so nonprofits can come. We we encourage that in Concord, um, and we'd certainly welcome them to come. I don't think they'd want to be there every week. It's you yeah, know, a big time commitment. Say, yeah. But in the busy part of the summer, when they've got some volunteers that could do it, um, you never know, because a lot of people don't know what the Grange is. I know. I mean, mm. we, we're trying to. You know, mm. has been very active in the community, but. We were talking about it because we have a new agricultural chairman, and of course, UNH, I kind of got into it with them last year with Cooperative Extension because, uh, no, the experiment station down there. Mm -hmm. And I said, they had a big story in a paper about this and that, and I wrote, I wrote down, I said, why wasn't the Grange mentioned in this article? We were the ones responsible for moving that down there from Dartmouth down to Durham. You were? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got, I'm the historian for the State Grange, and I have all the records that show that we were the ones that yeah. moved them down there. And well, I didn't really knew that. I don't know anything about that. So I said, well, I'll gladly will send you down copies of the records. Didn't want them. or interested. Because huh. yeah, I know they just had the 150th, mm -hmm. was it? Yeah. Because I know they came up to our farm and shot some of the, the footage. Uh, oh, if, you, if you notice, there were ads on TV. Of the experiment station? It this was, was of UNH. UNH. Oh, the UNH, The 150th yeah. years of, of yeah. UNH. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I knew that, of course. Mm. Um, but, yeah, well, you know, new people get involved sometimes, and the history gets, gets lost. We were having this discussion about the Concord Farmer's Market because we were involved when it first got started. Yeah. And uh, we were arguing about the year with somebody else. I can't remember... Zeb Carell. Zeb Carell from the Department of Agriculture, and it started in uh, Bicentennial Square. And it took a little bit to get us to remember. We we had in our mind it started in the, what's now the Attorney General's office parking lot, was the Bank of New Hampshire. Oh yes, yeah. You know, um, but it started the first year. It was in Bicentennial Square. It was like four markets, and there were six farmers at the time. Yeah. That came. Yeah. So what year was that then? Seventy-eight. Well, it's, uh, yeah, 78, yeah, because we figured we're coming up on the 40th. Mm -hmm. And next year is also the 200th, I believe, of the State House. And yeah, so we yeah. were kind of, yeah. you know, saying, geez, maybe we can tie the 40th, you know, wow. year, yeah. but the 200th year of the, 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 when they built the first part of the State House down there. And this is the 118. This is the 150th anniversary of the Grange being formed in Washington, D.C. Huh. Mm -hmm. We get a big celebration out there in November. New Hampshire is 144 years old right now, so we've got a few years before we get up there. But because yeah. we weren't one of the first ones started, I was out in the Midwest, Minnesota, and Iowa, Miss Michigan, Wisconsin. Those are the ones that started it. Were the ones, but it was hmm. we. The orders were signed right after the Civil War by the President of the United States to start that start the Grange. Huh. And we were the friend of the farmer, and they said because the heal the wounds of the north and the south was the creation of the Grange to spread the word of agriculture. Yep. And so three members of the Masonic Order, two members of the Odd Fellows, and somebody else got together to work out the details of this new organization, fraternal organization, because the women wanted equal rights and the men, and of course, Oddfells and Masons, no. Yeah, that's They're right. separate. Yeah. But the Grange was created as a family organization of the farmer, and that's how it is. And it was a presidential order that started it? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. Yes, it was. And huh. uh, yeah, I've got the history and all that stuff there yeah, of the national as well. Huh. But back to the Concord Market, that's yeah. one of the things that we did quite a few years ago, was we said, we're going to save one booth out. Yeah, that will be for whether it's the high school sports team or 
We don't do political stuff. Mm. Um, but any nonprofits. The firemen have been down. The firemen have been down doing their things. Oh, and great. so, yeah, if you guys yeah, want I think to, we should do that. You know, contact yes. the, the president. Con Concord Library came over one year and yeah. had a booth. And, and we just thought it was, you know, this is Concord's market. Mm. Uh, you know, we should do this. Yeah, I think it's uh, a good idea. Because but yeah, contact uh, President Wayne, well. Wayne uh, Hall. Okay. He's the president. And oh, he's the one that. that does the scheduling. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's that's the purpose of that that set aside booth. Yeah, is to allow groups like the Grange or yeah, you know. I can't. And if they don't have enough members, um, the Merrimack County Conservation District has a booth and runs the kiosk oh, yeah. for the tokens for the EBT. Oh really? And, and they yeah. you know they have um, special wooden nickels that they give out. Mm. And sometimes they they will share a booth with somebody if they need extra help, you know, and they'll help yeah. spread the word too. Get you two back and get you two as members of the Grange too. We should be. You're right. That would be good. Yeah, I actually had a nice talk with the president of the Grange and said, you know, Grange and Farm Bureau should get together more. Oh, there's been many. Uh, we mean the, pre the president of the Grange. Yep. Chris Heath. Um, yes, he was at the meeting last year. Yeah. Over at the uh, yeah the Department yeah. of Electrical Engineers yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And of course, I've been involved with the Farm Bureau over the years. But there's always and been that clash for it. And I don't know why. I yeah, don't, I don't either. It. I can't. I don't. I won't. Yeah. yeah I don't I know don't why. That's why I said I, to him, we should be working together more. I know. Yeah. Because I mean, we're both in the same thing. But yeah, I don't understand what whatever caused that rift years ago. Oh, but, who knows? But it was always that thing. They wouldn't. One wouldn't come to the other, and one wouldn't go to the other's function. And hmm. I, but yeah, Farm Bureau. That's right. Yeah, because you have don't they have an annual meeting or something? Oh sure, yeah. yeah. There's annual meetings in every county, and then the state annual meeting occurs in November every year. That's right. Yeah. And then they yeah. have a national meeting. Yeah, yeah. of course, yeah, the part of American Farm Bureau. Well, that's good. But yeah, of course, Bob Hefner was involved with the Grange for years. Oh, yeah, yeah. And well, uh, yeah. he was served on the House SAG and Environment Committee, so Gone. Farm Bureau worked with him for a long time. Yeah, he. Yeah, the he, he, yeah that was a <laughs> surprise for all of us, including Bob. Uh, but he, he's been a, he was a good friend of agriculture oh yes uh, you know he, <laughs> yeah no he was he, he was good. very supportive yeah and uh, very forthcoming in, in all the stuff that he did as oh, far as good. we were concerned good uh, but yeah I know in talking with Bob on several occasions he would say well the Grange here's what the Grange is thinking on this sir so he was always thinking yeah well that's good well, it looks like we're at the end of the time. Oh, my it's God. It's been good having you two on. Get you two back again to come on when the season starts. So, basically, you're not going to open up up there for sale of anything until, what, July strawberry 1st? Strawberry season, yeah. July 1st? Some, June 1st? The, the strawberry season, whenever we start picking strawberries, is when we open in the field. I know. Usually, you were the first ones last year, and it was around June, I thought, of yeah, early usually, July like I said, or usually, something. And then, yeah, for the strawberries, and then we open the farm stand, as soon as we've got something other than yeah. one crop, okay, All right. you know, so yeah. we finish up the strawberries, going to blueberries, and then there's always some well, vegetables get coming you on, on right around that time period. Yeah. Too. Well, I know people will know that you're open. So. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Good. We're always, we're always willing to come in and talk. It's our hometown. Well, that's right. Good. So. <laughs> Just wish we get the trains back up here. <laughs> anyway, well, we've been talking with Chuck and Diane Seller here at the uh, Apple Hill Farm, and uh, don't forget, you know, if farmers come first there and you're, the goods on the table are provided by the farmers, you know. So, with that in mind, thanks for joining us on Around Town. I'm your host, Dick Powden, and thanks to my director, Ian Marks, and we'll see you all soon. I, this has been Around Town. <laughs>